Hi everybody. Well, we're back. <laughs> I'm Nancy Frigo with Cobo Baker Commercial and we are here today in Northwest Indiana and I'm so excited. We are going to be speaking today with the United States Congressman Frank Mervan of the First District of the State of Indiana. Yes. And he will be explaining what is going on in the region here in Northwest Indiana with the train and the commuter rail that we are talking about, uh, the Westlake Corridor and the double track. Uh, going to the center of our state actually and it happens to be his district so grab your cup of coffee relax and check this out and enjoy this episode it's epic well hello everybody and I am so excited today to be sitting here in Maryville Indiana and speaking with our United States representative from Congress uh, Mr. Frank Mervan and he represents our first district in the state of Indiana and thank you so much for meeting with us today uh, regarding the Boots on the Ground campaign and the um, commuter train of Northwest Indiana. Well, I want to thank you very much uh, for allowing us uh, the opportunity to be able to speak to people about the important economic development projects that we have uh, in Northwest Indiana and the region and being able to talk about the impact that it'll have on real people's lives, uh, what it'll have on the real estate market and what it will have for the quality of life for individuals going forward. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a uh, wide audience and there are several questions and uh, uncertainties of people not really understanding on the level of what the impact is going to be. So this is amazing that you know you took some time today to meet with us and I really appreciate that. Uh, so how's it going? I understand uh, that you took office last January. How's, it, how, how's everything going? <laughs> everything is going very well. Mm -hmm. um, what I mean by that is we've had uh, challenges getting through the pandemic, getting through the hard times. Uh, very proud of the rescue plan uh, and what we've done for the our district and our region. Mm -hmm. uh, the American Rescue Plan was designed to rescue, uh, and what it did is it rescued small businesses with PPP loans, millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars throughout the region to small businesses. It rescued our schools to make sure that they were safe to get our children back in school, and it rescued our economy to get the parents back to work and to get ourselves back up and running uh, so we could get uh, to where we need to be to thrive as an economy. And so uh, once we have gotten through that, um, you know, we passed the infrastructure bill, which we'll be talking about through the, throughout this process. Uh, why that's important is because it utilizes our, uh, our, our region and our region steel industries to be able to uh, reinvest in our roads and our bridges and our waterways and what that infrastructure bill does really is it invests in the American worker and when the American worker uh, are working for over the next 10 years then they're buying more real estate then they're developing then Main Street is doing better uh, the diner is doing better um, those individuals our economy is uh, doing better so I find it very important to talk about the infrastructure bill uh, about what it will mean for people's lives. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, very proud of those facts. So the overall impact of what is going on in our region with the commuter rail coming to the area, uh, I would love to hear uh, you know, what you and your office, maybe you can uh, let our viewers know uh, exactly what part you know, as far as your you and your office has played with bringing and you know, this, this undergoing this huge economic uh, you know, turn, turn here for absolutely. For and um, first, it's important to put credit where credit's due. Congressman Visklowski worked on this project for uh, a long time and was able to see it come to fruition. Uh, and the double tracking going from South Bend to Chicago will decrease uh, travel time into the one of the largest economies in the Midwest, uh, the capital of the Midwest, Chicago, from South Bend. And what that does for mom and dads is when you're decreasing travel time, you're increasing the quality of life. So that time that a mom can be with her newborn or that time that a father could be coaching softball or be with his newborn is very vital. And so when you talk about the promotion of the double tracking, I think it's extremely important to talk about how, um, you know, Northwest Indiana is a place people want to live. And it's my job, staying true to the question, it's my job to make sure that we have a quality of life and we have this type of infrastructure in place so that individuals can depend on it to be able to go to work, to be able to increase their family's income, and to be able to increase the quality of life when it comes to uh, their time with their families and their time in the community. So I think that this project is uh, a well-rounded, robust 
uh, gift to Northwest Indiana uh, and to uh, Indiana as a whole uh, because it will allow development also, which we need to talk about, right. transit-oriented development. Let's talk about that. Bring businesses. Mm -hmm. Not only are we going to create jobs building the train mm -hmm. for working men and women, then we're going to increase the quality of life. We have the opportunity in corridors around the train to build up in our urban core, such as Gary, such as Hammond, such as East Chicago, such as Michigan City. Michigan City just announced an $80 million project, uh, a, a private, a, a, pub, a public project, I'm sorry, a private pro project, $80 million for transit oriented development near uh, the train. That is something that Michigan City will, uh, it's transformational. And if we understand that, and if we understand that there's more yet to come, that the if we get out of the way and let private business what they do what they do best, they're going to develop uh, around there. And we've offered incentives in order to do that. Let's talk about the incentives. So how would someone say from another part of our country, um, you know, what, what, what would you like to let them know? as far as what, how does this work? Because a lot of uh, agents also and brokers throughout the country have reached out to me wanting to know more information about that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So how it works is there's transit-oriented development, uh, which is a tax incentive. If you build within 0.7 miles of the train station, the designated area, you receive this points, uh, a, a transit-oriented development tax uh, incentive. And so when you're doing that, you're, you know, there's going to be a lot of retail, there's going to be a lot of housing, uh, a lot of mixed use in those areas in order to develop around what we are creating with the double tracking and the extension of the South Shore into Dyer and hopefully into next phases. But when you're developing around there, then you're allowing for, as we mentioned, business development. So very simply put, there are incentives to bring businesses in in order to develop around uh, the investment that we are making in uh, commuter rail. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, with uh, let's talk about jobs. So uh, wow, it, and this just opens up a whole nother level of employment. I'm right. I would I would assume that absolutely. Uh, we have to talk about the first phase construction, right? Mm -hmm. right. Uh, first phase of construction. So there are laborers. There are uh, working men and women who are constructing the train. So that allows you know that's a one uh, almost a billion dollar investment. And so part of that billion dollars is going towards labor. And when that goes towards labor, working men and women are able to provide for their families. And when that they're providing for their families, then the diners in Crown Point and the main square, they're able to go out and have dinner. They're able to go out and enjoy themselves. Uh, they're able to buy new products. They're able to purchase and, and, and build onto their homes. They're able to provide for their children to go to college. They're able to save for their retirement. And so that's the first phase. The next phase is the ability to bring people in as you know, corporate headquarters in Chicago. Uh, when they bring in new corporations, people want to make sure that they have less than an hour travel time. Northwest Indiana is opening that market now because of the double tracking and the extension. We're cutting down travel time to the largest economy in the Midwest. And so now we're in the market of the Chicagoland area of being able to have low taxes, a great quality of life when it comes to the dunes and the lake shore and what we have to offer. And I believe the region is a wonderful place to raise a family when it comes to education and opportunity. And so I believe that we are um, busting open the door for our markets on the real estate development side and also just as a community and a quality of life. So the train will be an anchor towards that. That's wonderful. And then with the train, I believe I remember uh, uh, seeing a video that from previously when you were uh, actively running for Congress talking about transit uh, as far as maybe the trains as, as well, the uh, bus stations and things like that, which is going to boom and it'll bring people to those, those locations too. So, uh, so recently though, I did see that there was an article that was written uh, that I'm very excited to announce that you really were a strong um, backer, I believe, of this, um, bringing an additional amount of funds to the region here in Northwest. Actually, it's the Northwest, but Northern part of our state here for infrastructure and some of these. Let's talk about that. Correct. Part of my job is to go to Washington, D.C. and develop relationships in order to deliver for my district. Um, 
and I find it extremely important that we not only uh, that we deliver to the district. So the uh, the commuter rail project is, ex is extremely important, but on top of that, communities still have needs. And so we were able to bring an additional $45 million in community funded projects um, to our area. A couple examples of that would be the dredging of the canals, uh, the ship canals uh, that lead into the steel mills. When we dredge that and we make that applicable to the St. Lawrence uh, waterways, we are allowing uh, barges to come in and be able to feed into our steel mills at a quicker pace. Everything now is about cutting down supply chain, cutting time for delivery. Uh, and that is a long-term investment that will bring immediate results so that our steel industry can ship uh, in an efficient way. And so that is something that we are, we're proud of bringing that project. And then there are projects, uh, smaller projects that I'm very proud of, Ivy Tech, uh, which we're going to be going to announce today. Uh, they're receiving resources in order to prepare the workforce uh, because as you have all these projects coming in, you have to have a, a, a prepared workforce. And as we've learned during the pandemic, how important the worker is to capital and how important it is to be at dependable employees and educated employees. And so Ivy Tech will receive a resources from the community funded project along with St. Francis, which is a nursing school. During the pandemic, what we learned is it's very important not to have a shortage of nurses. And so we were able to secure some dollars to make sure that there are accelerated programs uh, here locally for individuals who want that opportunity, who have children, who are trying to make themselves better and who wanna help people in their most vulnerable days while they're in the hospital. Uh, I find that very important. And we also were able to secure dollars for the Gary Police Department. $500,000 oh, to make sure that they're uh, investing in equipment and, and, and in public safety. And so those types of investments or delivering back to the district is extremely important to me because I know that that will impact the quality of life. It'll impact our public safety. It'll impact our ability to have nurses in the hospital. It'll impact our workforce. Um, it'll impact our steel industry when it comes to jobs. And there are other projects that are uh, infrastructure for sewer and for septic and, and changing those uh, and, and those types of investments mm -hmm. are invaluable because it builds upon and brings in more development. Right. Uh, recently, uh, I had spoken <coughs> with uh, the local uh, congressman or councilman, um, uh, Mr. Jorgensen from the Lake County, and your district is wide. I guess I, I think we need to explain how you cover uh, quite a few counties. <laughs> I cover all of so, Lake County, all of Porter County, and two-thirds of LaPorte County. That's quite a big district. 780,000 people. And so he was able to secure some funds from the ARP funds. And so and they, you had mentioned, and then a lot of people don't understand that, you know, there's certain limitations on certain fundings. So with the ARP, a lot of it came with water and sewer. You know, they were able to bring that to areas which they never have had before. And so Correct. I think it's important, uh, and it's my job to talk about the American Rescue Plan. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we voted for that. And Let's I'm very proud that. of mm -hmm. the American Rescue Plan. Thank it you. brought in, uh, <laughs> it brought in hundreds of millions of dollars into the first district, uh, and it gave communities the resources to invest. Uh, as you had mentioned, the county councilman was probably investing in South County when it came to uh, infrastructure in um, sewers and and. Uh, water, you, you, you know, there's capacity. And as we often talk about in smart growth in development. Right. And so responsible, in, smart growth. Responsible, smart growth. Right. So when there's a storm or you have mm -hmm. storm water, you've got to be able to manage that water. That's a big part of development. And so just let, let's use that one example. So the American Rescue Plan came from, uh, we voted for it, passed it, and it got to the communities. It was able to get to the counties Quickly, and to too. the communities. St. John, Cherville, Dyer, um, Gary, Lowell, Whiting, every community received uh, their allocation. And they are able to turn the key and open up those projects. Now, what does that do? It, it does a great deal for development uh, in South County, but it also allows those communities of St. John and Dyer with the smart growth to use those funds that would have been used in other places for public safety. Uh, the majority of the American Rescue Plan in our district very often was utilized by the cities and towns uh, and the municipalities to give the essential workers such as police and firemen 
either bonuses or pay raises. Uh, it allowed them to pave roads. It allowed them to, to improve parks. It allowed them to invest in dollars uh, or invest those resources into that and also keep their budget that they have. Um, so, so it was it, above and beyond their correct. local budget. That is That's correct. Huge. So the American Rescue Plan rescued our communities because tax revenue was down. The essential workers uh, were were out there risking their lives, mm -hmm. and this is a way to reward them. Cause and effect. <laughs> Correct. And so the American Rescue Plan, I believe, had a great impact. And as we opened up, it rescued our schools to make sure that they had very good HVAC systems, meaning heating and air conditioning, that were taking the bacteria out of the air. It allowed schools to reopen uh, and to make sure that our kids were safe. The rescue plan, as you mentioned, is uh, is allowing communities to invest in uh, projects that can increase smart growth and development in all areas. So, what's not the future? Let's talk about the future of you know your uh, tenorship here. With uh, oh, by the way, uh, congratulations! I understand your father, who was a senator, had just recently retired. Correct. And that's amazing. So thank your you. family is just really you know helping grow our communities and I can't thank you enough, especially from the real estate community, I have to tell you, the realtors um, really have expressed that they're very grateful for all the things that your family has accomplished and help us grow our in a smart way and in, in a responsible way in throughout Northwest Indiana. And I can't thank you guys enough, but how awesome, how is he doing? <laughs> he, he's doing very well. Mm -hmm. um, he retired in the first couple weeks of January this year, mm -hmm. and uh, he served faithfully for uh, 39 years as the Indiana State's 30, it's really 40 years, mm -hmm. and ultimately was the longest serving state senator. And um, he was, you know, his formula to longevity was he loved the people and he wanted to make sure that he impacted them in a positive way. He had a great yes. deal of pride in where he came from. He was born and raised in the harbor in East Chicago, uh, and he had simple rules. He was a very honest man. Uh, he always wanted to make sure that the property owner was protected and there was making the best decisions for people who were investing their life in where they lived. Um, and so he did that every single day, and he did it with great pride. He also believed very strongly working men and women and the value of a good education here in Northwest Indiana. And uh, I'm very proud to be his son and uh, I'm very proud of him. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Now with them, let's talk about your future uh, with, you know, where do you see things going uh, with our uh, with our state and with our region? You know, that we're having all these things happen. You know, what, what do you kind of foresee as a projected future with all these things coming to the region? Well, I, I believe that uh, it's important for us to uh, continue to build upon what we've talked about. The expansion and the extension of the South Shore is extremely important. And the opportunities that it will create along, as we mentioned, with the transit-oriented development. Um, we've talked about uh, the infrastructure bill and how important that will be to our area, to the Gary Airport. Uh, because it's about airports and ports and broadband and clean water and, and replacing lead pipes so our children are cleaning or drinking clean water. That's important in our older urban areas. Um, but let's just talk about the Gary Airport, uh, bringing in logistics, uh, the Amazon, the UPSs, the FedExs. Uh, I believe we're on track to be able to invest into uh, the Gary Airport and the Port of Indiana. The Port of Indiana. Um, is uh, one of the diamonds in the rough in Northwest Indiana. It employs at its peak about 3,500 people. Uh, it's bringing in products um, from all over the world and all throughout the United States. And I believe those investments in the Port of Indiana and Gary will allow us to create more anchors. So we have the double tracking, we have the extension, we have the ports and the ports who are investing in roads and bridges. So that will allow us to bring in businesses and something that I'm very proud of <clears throat> that I'm going to compete for till the very end, is I'm co-chair of the Steel Caucus. Uh, and there are 100 members, bipartisan members, within the Steel Caucus. And what we do is we make sure that we have trade policies and advocate for trade policies that uh, advance the American steel industry. Uh, as the co-chair of the Steel Caucus, uh, we were able to advocate for a Buy American provision that was melted and poured when we talk about the infrastructure bill. Okay. So when this you're is good. right when you're <laughs> driving over a bridge or mm -hmm. when you're replacing roadways, mm -hmm. we want to use American steel and we want to make sure that the American Beautiful. steel industry is hitting their full capacity. 
And when they're hitting their full capacity, the United Steel workers are working, the contractors who are feeding the steel mills are working. Um, so now let's take it to the next level. And, and this is what I believe is, is the next generation of American domestic manufacturing here in the United States and hopefully in Northwest Indiana. So there are what we've learned during the pandemic, and it is a new, new term that everyone is able to catch on to, is the semiconductors and the chips. There was a yes. shortage because those were imported from other countries, as in the pandemic Im impacted the world. There was a shortage in chips and semiconductors. Well, we have a piece of legislation that I co-sponsored, which is called the American Competes Act. And what that does is that invests billions of dollars in American domestic manufacturing and of semiconductors Beautiful. and chips here in the United States. Within that piece of legislation, that it invests in STEM, and it also ties public-private partnerships and and, and in also draws in public institutions such as colleges. And so what we want to do, along with everyone else in the United States, is there are 15 spots that are designated in that piece of legislation, which will be tech hubs to develop the technology in order to bring in manufacturing of semiconductors and chips. And we can do it cheaper. So when Ford in South Chicago stops producing cars because, or stops work, the assembly line. My brother works at the Chicago Heights plant. And he was laid off immensely throughout the entire time. Correct. Pandemic. And there's a good chance that your brother may live in my district. Mm -hmm. So if he's not working, uh, then that's important to right. me to be able to find that solution. Now the next level of that he is, is district. <laughs> yes, the production and right. and hundreds of thousands of people, mm -hmm. a thought you know, a thousand people from the auto from the Ford plants and from the auto industry live in my district. So when that industry slows down, it also slows down the steel industry. Yes, because the steel industry <laughs> isn't producing Positive the auto <laughs> and the appliance industry because we don't have those chips. Right. So now let's compete for Northwest Indiana. Love it to be a manufacturing mm -hmm. hub of domestic manufacturing when it comes to chips and semiconductors. We have the universities, we have the manufacturing, we have the workforce, we have the location. So that is why I co-sponsored that piece of legislation to make sure we're shortening those supply chains, we're investing in the American worker, and we're investing in the region. If you can close your eyes and envision a semiconductor chip center in, in Gary, Indiana, or in Lowell, Indiana, or in Whiting, Indiana, then you are putting tens of thousands of people to work. You're shortening our supply chain. You're securing the auto industry. You're securing our national security, and you're doing it right here in Northwest Indiana. Now that is a vision, and and we want to complete. You know, we want to compete and have a seat at the table, and that's why I, I believe it's important to be a co-sponsor of that piece of legislation to see it through, and to find the next level, and to work in a bipartisan way. You know, something that uh, I should have started off with, um, and hopefully I can't emphasize this enough, is great projects always begin and end in great partnerships and bipartisan partnerships. Communication. And mm -hmm. communication. So the extension and the expansion of the South Shore <clears throat> went, went through three governors, Governor Daniels, Governor Pence, and Governor Holcomb. Uh, we are also Congressman Viskowski, uh, myself, Senator Young, Senator Braun. It's that collaborative effort of a very, very disciplined mission to do what's best for Northwest Indiana and to work across the aisle to get results. Uh, and I believe strongly in that. I have said that from day one when I chose to enter the arena of running for Congress. And I believe that strongly now. And we'll have we'll have those partnerships at the airport. We have those partnerships at the ports, um, and the infrastructure partnership of the commuter rail is extremely important to talk yes. about, and to really mention how that was, is a bipartisan um, effort to make sure that Northwest Indiana is thriving. We truly are the crossroads of America. You know, with the intermodal Correct. that we have here, and the opportunity trains, planes automobiles, highways, you, it's the perfect storm, perfect beautiful storm for success. And I cannot thank you enough for expressing everything that you've just told, told us. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you, I, and again, I'm really I appreciate looking the forward opportunity. forward to seeing this succeed and I can't wait uh, when the first train starts going to hopefully I will see you then too. And I can't thank you enough for explaining everything to our, to our viewers. And uh, good luck with everything in the future and you know, 
God bless you. And I appreciate you doing this and communicating not only to our region, but to the country, uh, how important these projects are. Yes. And uh, for us to be able to, for lack of a better term, brag about Northwest Indiana and all that we have to offer. Um, there are, uh, our future is extremely bright. It's built upon um, a great workforce, a great region, a great community. And these investments, such as the expansion and the extension of the South Shore, which will bring in businesses, it'll increase home values, and it'll allow us to thrive and be connected to the largest economy uh, in the Midwest. Absolutely. And so, and also to be able to utilize our quality of life that we have here as far as the dunes, the Great Lakes, and the Lakeshore. So uh, I appreciate you bringing this uh, to the forefront and allowing us to talk about it and to brag 